Alright, hello everybody, welcome to another video, and update 22 has released in Fallout 76, and it brought a bunch of new stuff, so let's check it out. So first up, we have the One Wasteland feature, which changed the scaling of the world, so the entire world will now scale up to you, or much closer to you than before, but there are some caps, of course, so in the forest, things will only scale up to level 50, but if you go into the Savage Divide and beyond, things start scaling all the way up to 100. Making the enemies much tougher, of course, they are higher level, so they have more health, more damage reduction, they do more damage but they also give you more xp and they should drop better loot so if you're high level like right now i'm 378 or 379 everything is going to be tougher overall but it's important to know that it scales the world to you not the world around you like before where if i were to go into a location i would immediately scale everything up to max level that's not how it works anymore the enemies scale for each player separately so if i level 378 go to a location and i see a level 100 enemy if there is a level 10 player beside me they will see the same enemy but level 10 and the enemy will be scaled appropriately for both of us. I think this was a good change overall because for high level it makes pretty much the entire wasteland more rewarding and for low levels on one hand it makes the wasteland easier to get into because you will no longer run into enemies that are 30 levels above you but on the other it could also make it harder in some respects because you will always run into level appropriate monsters so you can't over level areas anymore. Now you might think this is not a big deal because well it's low level content but this game can be pretty brutal at low levels when you're just starting out because you have no guns, you have no ammo, you have no junk to craft ammo or repair your weapons or armor. So not having the ability to overlevel stuff is pretty harsh. Now another thing that's upping the difficulty of the world is some serious nerfing that's happened because basically what they did is they took all the multiplicative buffs and made them additive instead. And while this did hit most setups, the ones that were hit the most were of course the bloodied belt because they were stacking perk card bonuses on top of the bloodied effect from guns and then the adrenal reaction effect from mutations. I did kind of expect this to happen at some point though because bloodied setups, while somewhat squishy like you're one hit away from death even though you do have multiple different defensive layers, were doing ludicrously more damage than anything else. It was just a little bit too strong because on top of the damage that you were doing, if you weren't running power armor you would be running a full unyielding set which would give you a ton of agility and make you essentially invisible in stealth and if you were using power armor you could run emergency protocol which would reduce the incoming damage by half if you were below 20% health. So yeah on top of the world scaling much higher now we also do less damage overall. Though to be entirely honest I haven't really noticed that much of a change. I tried running around with my normal shotgunner setup which you've been watching up until now but I've also tried some heavy guns, I've tried some melee, some rifle stuff and it didn't feel too bad at all. Next up we have the second season of the scoreboard thingamabob that you progress through by doing daily and weekly challenges and you progress through it quite fast so while you can skip ahead by using atoms I would not recommend it unless it's coming to an end and you're still far far away from being done. Now the rewards you get along the way are fairly varied you get some perk art packs, caps, gold bullion, scrap but you also get things like new cards which is kind of cool you get a ton of skins and some cosmetic stuff but there are also some useful items like for example the weight bench you get fairly early on that you can place in your camp and then use it to get a little bit of extra strength for a while. And of course every now and then you get a few atoms as well. Moving on from there we have the daily ops which is kind of like a random dungeon thingamabob and this is probably my favorite feature of this update. The feature is easily accessible from the map and the way it works is every day a random dungeon will be selected, then a random faction will be selected and a random mutation will be selected and it will create a dungeon. So today for example it takes place in the burrows, it is occupied by robots and the robots Robots are resilient, so they can only be killed by melee attacks, so either with a melee weapon or with a weapon bash. You can still damage them with other stuff, but they can only be finished off with a melee hit. Now at the very bottom you can see that there are different reward tiers. There is the base tier for just completing it, and this is repeatable, you can do this as many times as you want, but if you manage to finish it under 16 minutes you also get the initiate tier reward, if you finish it under 12 minutes you also get the paladin tier reward, and if you finish it under 8 minutes you get the elder tier reward as well. Now supposedly there are going to be different dungeons with the different objectives but for now we just have the uplink setup and during this setup enemies are super perceptive so you can't sneak past them and you have to fight them. Now at the moment the dungeon can take place either in the Boros, the Burning Mind, Valley Galeria or Vault 94. It can either be occupied by super mutants, blood eagles or robots and on top of the piercing gaze that's currently present
person in the uplink, so they're super perceptive. They can be volatile, so they will explode on death. The enemies can have active camouflage, so they will be cloaked while they're not attacking. They can be resilient, so they can only be killed by melee attacks, or they will be using freezing tight, so they will freeze players they attack. Now, the uplink setup is pretty straightforward. You first start out by going to a signal booster and repairing it. This then reveals two different uplinks that you have to go to and boost and then wait for them to charge up. And you're not really defending these, by the way. You just have to stand near them. And the more players near them, the faster they will charge. So if you want to get the highest two reward, you need to bring a full squad. This is probably the hardest part because you're constantly going to be swarmed by enemies. And with this particular combination that we have today, it's actually even more difficult because the robots will fire at you from a distance. And if you run at them, then you're not boosting the uplink. But it's not too bad. I even managed to solo it, though I didn't do it particularly fast. And I did have to finish it in power armor. Once both of the uplinks are done, you will have to go to the final area where you have to clear out some enemies and then fight a boss, which for this particular version was an Assaultron Intimidator. Now one thing, well actually two things that are really cool about this is that first of all, since there is so much combat, you take 50% less durability on both armor, power armor and weapons. And the enemies were kind of like the Wendigos in the Colossal Problem event. So they will drop the ammo type that you kill them with. And if you kill them with a melee weapon, they will just drop random ammo. This means you take barely any durability damage. And if you have an ammo efficient weapon, you can actually end up with more ammo at the end. And once you're done, you can simply press escape and this will give you a rundown of the daily op. So it will show you how fast you manage to finish it. It will show you if you have attained any ranks at all. And it will, of course, show you the rewards. Now, the rewards for the most part are just random bollocks. You get some stim packs, some ammo right away, some grenades and explosives. But you also get some legendaries and you get more if you attain higher ranks. And there are also some rare rewards that are specific to the daily ops. So yeah, as I said already, this is definitely my favorite new feature. It's a lot of fun to do this. I've done it multiple times, mainly in a squad. I was running more of a supportive type build and we did manage to finish it with the Elder 2 reward and got one of the unique plants that you can get from this. And the fact that it changes every day and the setup is completely random, right? It's randomly generated every day means that it's going to stay fresh for quite a while. And the final big addition with this update are the legendary perk arts. Now you unlock the slots for the legendary perk arts at level 50, 75, 100, 150, 200, and 300. And into these slots, you can put one of many legendary perk cards, which are for the most part fairly impactful. Now you get the perk cards by default, but they're all going to be rank one. And you rank them up by using perk card points that you get by scrapping perk cards. And you need 50 points to get it up to rank two, 100 points to get it up to rank three, and 150 points to get it up to rank four. And this is going to take a bloody while. And the perk card effects, as I've said, are pretty impactful. They range from the ability to auto unlock terminals and locks. They can make enemies explode when killed with a particular weapon. They can allow you to craft far more ammo or even increase your special stats as well. And you should definitely check them out yourself because there is a little bit too many of them for me to go through every single one in this sort of quick overview video. Now, in addition to these big changes, we have some smaller stuff like, for example, the fast travel to both Foundation and the Crater, so the home of the Settlers and the Raiders, is now free. This should have been like that from the beginning, but, you know, better late than never. And, and thank our mighty lord Todd Howard for this one, we can finally cripple the Scorch Beast Queen again. So we can actually fight the boss again, you know, normally, instead of standing there being like, up oh, there she goes. Okay, now, now she's going to the left. Up, oh, she's flying over to Watoga, and back she goes, and that's a swoop. All right, we can actually, you know, cripple the queen's wings and force her to land. And on top of that, you can cripple her legs to slow down her movement and turning speed too. This was necessary though, because with the damage nerf, killing her without being able to force her to land would have been fairly difficult. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot about this, and this is pretty important too. There were some changes to perk cards, with the biggest one by far being tank killer, which previously would give you armor penetration for rifles, but now it gives you armor penetration for rifles and pistols. So pistols finally have armor penetration on perk cards. And it's in perception too, which is really good because pistol ear builds usually have trouble squeezing more stuff into agility because they have so much stuff in there. So the fact that it's in perception makes it easier to slot in. And finally, let's go over some like random disjointed stuff. So the assassin legendary effect now applies its damage bonus to all humans rather than just players. Finally, the building public team was changed over to casual and it still gives the same intelligence bonus, which makes far more sense because previously everyone would be running around on a building public team to get the extra intelligence to get more XP. And they added a new public team that's the daily ops, which gives you extra XP for completing daily ops with 25% extra XP at the start and 100% extra XP when you're fully linked up. And that is pretty much all I wanted to say. So I thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Bye bye.